Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. It's terrific to see you all again. And uh, here we are with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, and my partner, John Coleman. How you doing, John and John? John? The John Johns, yes. Hey, John, uh, it is Labor Day. <laughs> Labor Day, I don't know if you labor anymore, but there's a lot of people in restaurants working real hard, um, missing, you know, the, whatever the degree of normality is, but missing... Um, I think the original normality before the COVID stuff, missing the the freedoms and the and the boy the the traffic uh, among other things in restaurants. And I was thinking about all those people. Um, there's a, a wonderful little Italian restaurant by me, family owned. Uh, the dad uh, works the kitchen and sometimes the bar. His daughter and his wife sometimes uh, uh, tend the tables. Uh, they've got other people who help, but it's a real family restaurant. But I thought to myself, um, people who work in the restaurants, who serve us, uh, really don't have an easy job. They have to, you know, be friendly. They have to be efficient. Um, they take the flack if the food isn't just the way you wanted it. And I think Labor Day, we need to salute restaurant workers, including the people in the back, by the way. Oh. If you've ever gotten dirty silverware. You know. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, they are, uh, in, in a sense, they are frontline workers because uh, what do the people do when they can get out of COVID and they go to go out again? They, they just dash for restaurants. And um, everybody loves that experience. Everybody misses that experience. Um, <clears throat> but the workers, as you said, on both sides of the kitchen door, uh, work very, very hard. Um, I think probably most of us, many of us, were waiters at some time. Um, and let's just think between certain levels. The fast food workers generally get treated very, very poorly. They're just today in the news here was um, that there was a complete walkout. Uh, I won't say the chain because I don't remember which one it was. One of the big ones. And uh, they walked out and, and said... Uh, we're on strike. Thank you for your service, which freaked out the owner of the place. But they were being forced to work 50, 60 hour shifts. OK, you want to work here? That's what you're going to do. You're going to get minimum wage or less. And they don't make the big tips. And those are very hard jobs uh, in, in fast food, as you can well imagine. Because the type of people who go to fast food restaurants can be a lot more curmudgeonly um, than uh, and the families and the kids and throwing up and so forth. <clears throat> it's not really a great restaurant atmosphere. It's a it's a different kind of atmosphere, and they work very hard. Um, then you move up to a good luncheonette or a diner or um, into a middle class style of restaurant um, type that Guy Fieri would uh, go to, and what you often see are people, long-time workers, who like their jobs. Well, we'll get to the money in a moment. They, they like their jobs. They love their jobs because the people in the restaurants, oh, we're like family, you know? <clears throat> and you get to know your waitress or your waiter, and you always ask for Bill, you always ask for Susan and so forth. And, oh, she's not working today. Oh, that's too bad. I really love her. Um, you dip according, according. I think that's a much different work ethic that they have, not they don't have problems, um, not that workers don't steal money and, and, and uh, just as the owners skim off the top and don't pay their workers. I mean, that, that's a terrible thing when you don't pay your workers their well-earned tips and so forth. I think we've gotten into tipping on this show uh, that in other parts of the world there is no tipping. They get a straight salary they can live on. Um, and then you more move into the very high-end restaurants where you and I will pay a minimum of maybe a hundred dollars per person, um, and probably more with wine tax and tip. Um, those people um, have to be very skilled, have to uh, have a high work ethic, and they work very hard. But to tell you the truth, many of them do not work more than from five o'clock in the afternoon until nine thirty or ten. So and I've done it, you know, I mean, and during that five hours, you're going, 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 going and shouting in orders. The chef is shouting at you and get table 13. It's, it's tough. And you've got to 
still maintain a, uh, a, a formal, if not formal, very formal and friendly uh, demeanor, no matter what happens, including, as you say, these belligerent uh, people. I have dined all over the world, and this is not the way they make Dover Sole in France. You know, if you don't bend over backwards for such people, unless they're truly insulting, you lose your tip. And that said, it is not at all unusual for a uh, waiter in a fine dining restaurant in a major city like New York, Los Angeles, um, so forth, uh, where people are running up $500 person bills, like at Nobu or, or even a sushi plus you restaurant, you can easily spend four or $500 there. Um, 20% of that is $100. So you, it is not unusual at all for a waiter <clears throat> to be able to clear, to make gross $100,000 a year. Sounds like a pretty good job. And yet, and yet, <clears throat> they are tough to come by. So much so that here in New York, a terrific high-end Italian restaurant called Il Gatto Pardo, uh, across from the Museum of Art and Art, put an ad in the, in the industry papers, we will guarantee you will make $100,000. Guarantee it. If you don't make that much that week, we will... Put in the money. That's how desperately they need good workers. Um, my both my sons are in the industry and they're sweating. Well, my older son, who manages for a major company, he oversees like six different restaurants in Manhattan. He says, "Dad, most of the time I'm working as cashier these days." You know, so yeah, it is a very very difficult job. Um, <clears throat> it can be sweaty. It can be insulting. Um, people don't hold you in high regard. But there also is, and we should, we should realize that there's an awful lot of money to be made in it if you like to work with people and maybe own your own restaurant someday and so forth and so on. So I pat them all on the back, give them a big hug if I could during COVID. Um, but I uh, congratulate those who work hard and make that kind of money because um, that's, a, that's a good piece of change. Well, I, I, I'd like to share from the other side, um, <clears throat> both in high school and through college, uh, I worked in uh, food service industries. My first job, I think, ever was delivering meat for a meat market where I learned my mathematics by writing the prices on a bag. Uh, and then I, I was a beefy kid, so I was delivering tiles, uh, these big heavy boxes of tiles, carrying them up uh, three-story walk-ups. Uh, but then I got a job for Brothers Restaurant at Flappish and I on, in Brooklyn. And uh, there I was, the griddle man and the soda jerk, and just generally taking care of everybody. And I enjoyed that because somebody would walk in with all sorts of different agendas. They'd walk in happy, unhappy, and somehow you could make their day a little bit nicer and brighter. Uh, and that was sort of like always what I wanted to do. And then I, I went up to the mountains uh, uh, near Monticello and uh, worked a restaurant uh, with three, a 300 uh, person uh, uh, dining room. And uh, I was the, the chief cook uh, and bottle washer because you did everything in those days. And uh, just keeping up with all the orders and making people happy. And then lastly, in Monticello, I worked at the Fountain Loo restaurant on, as a matter of fact, we happened to be taping this on a July 13th. And on Friday, July 13th, 1962, my uh, future wife, at that time a young girl, came into uh, Fountain Loo and said, I'm going to marry that guy. And I served her an egg cream, and the rest is history. So, uh, <laughs> egg so creams have a special charge. They, 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 okay. Chocolate egg cream. Vanilla egg cream, I prefer, but chocolate egg cream is something special. You won her heart with a chocolate egg cream. I love I, that. I, well, yes, I did. But the truth be known. <laughs> <laughs> but but it really, it's a very, uh, uh, it's a very sad, uh, to me, what's really nice about it as opposed to other things that I've done that I've really enjoyed in my lifetime, traveling all over the world and, and selling products and, and doing customer service and building companies. But it was always that in the span of an hour, generally speaking, you can find out what somebody wants and complete the task and have the service done. And at the end, generally speaking, uh, and I was pretty successful at it, you got a nice tip. You always mm -hmm. got whatever it was. If it was 10 or 15%, you always got 5% more if you did a good job. And sometimes if you did a lousy job, they let you know by putting a nickel in, a, in, in the water that they left over at the, at the counter. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I think we do owe um, all the food service workers a salute because food is not only essential, it's entertainment for us, mm -hmm. right? We go out to be entertained. It is uh, a road to happiness. We go out to have a good time. Um, and boy, can the, a waiter or waitress make a big difference. And not only the waiter or waitress, but the maitre d', uh, the people coming uh, from the kitchen, I think of my the last time I went to a very nice restaurant, the uh, the bus boy who came around, he was preparing the table just as we were sitting down, just cleaning it off. What a friendly, happy guy! It just started the whole experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they all deserve a lot of credit and a salute. Happy Labor Day! I agree. And Please. don't forget, be generous with your tip. Please. <laughs> That's right. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.